All right, guys, so welcome to today's video. Today, I'm working on my guest Amy's hair. Uh, we're gonna do a transformation. You can see she's got some old highlights in there. So I'm gonna do a color transformation first. Then I'm gonna go in and do a really awesome layered haircut for you guys as well. So kind of a two for one video here. So I start off, I'm gonna use 4NV. This is uh, Joyco Lumashine Demi. And in the one bowl, I'm gonna use 4NV with some clear. Um, just to cut it a little bit and then I'm using straight 4NV 5 volume in the other bowl. So what I wanted to do is take 4NV, create two different levels out of it, um, but still get that depth from that 4NV as well. So I'll mix those two things up. The sectioning for this color technique is pretty simple. It's leaving out the hairline and creating zigzag triangle partings. Uh, all the way around the crown of the head uh, back up the other side then what I do is in the very front part at the whole hairline area I want to keep that nice and bright so I do the the bowl of 4NV with the clear on the front and then as I move into the back I do the just straight 4NV for depth from the from the ear back to the nape and then in the very top what I'm going to do is I'm going to crisscross those formulas so I'm going to do the deeper formula at the root and then I'm gonna paint that lighter formula through the ends. So again, both 4 and V, one just has a little bit of clear in it, and that clear is just gonna pop up the level a little bit, but not too much. I still want this to be kind of an overall look, but just to have a little bit of dimension to it. So very simple color technique, creates some highs and lows in there with those triangle sections, uh, using a little bit of a color melting technique, doing the deeper at the base and the lighter at the ends, and then the end result, I think you guys are really going to love. Uh, and then again, keeping it nice and bright around the face, that was my goal here. So using Joyco uh, Demi Lumashine, it's awesome because it creates so much shine and depth. We process that for 25 minutes and you've got your color technique. Now we're gonna go in with the cut. We're gonna base this off of her current parting. So that goes all the way down the part and then straight down center back. Now, Amy, uh, for a very long time, has had an undercut. She wants to grow that undercut out. She's got super thick hair. So we're gonna play around with that. I'm gonna leave the undercut underneath and then I'm just gonna section and split the head in half right down to the midpoint of the ear. So I do that on both sides. Um, so now her density is gonna be a little bit less because she has that um, undercut going on but I'm gonna go through and just cut a nice blunt line to begin the technique. Now, I know she's got a dark cape on, she's got dark hair, it's hard to see. I'm cutting a straight line parallel to the floor in the back of her head, so uh, those of you guys that can't quite visualize it, just know that I'm cutting that straight blunt line. Now I'm gonna take a vertical section out and I'm gonna start creating some concave layering. So what I'll do is I wanna go real short but keep the length of the hair. So you'll see me slide my hand up to the very end. What that does is gets me that short layering, but then also creates kind of an extreme layering pattern uh, in the haircut. So now I'm going to take a section right to the right of that, and I'm gonna overdirect everything to the center. So we're gonna create a stationary guide at this point, sliding my finger up, that's really important. You don't wanna cut the length off the back too much um, we cut that guide cutting the base at the beginning so you want to slide up to that point so that you don't lose uh, your baseline so sliding up but pushing everything to that center uh, section now I do the same thing on the left hand side and basically what we're trying to do is we're pushing weight over to the ear right so the density uh, typically in somebody's haircut especially with somebody with thick hair the density is so much thicker in the center back than it is uh, on top of the ear because that hairline starts to raise up and then you get to the temple area, you have a lot less hair than you do in the back. With Amy, her density is very similar, but I didn't want to base this whole haircut only on Amy. Uh, I want it to be a, a nice visual for you guys. So when you're working with somebody with thick hair, I like pushing a little extra weight to the shoulders because then that allows the density to make sense and kind of have a purpose. So we're cutting layering but we're also pushing it off to the side. Now I'm gonna go right along the parietal ridge, section off the top of the haircut, and just work on the side sections first. So I don't wanna connect the sides in, I wanna separate those so I keep everything nice and organized. So I'm gonna comb everything down to the side, and I'm gonna pull everything down to me and cut a nice line parallel to the floor again, um, connecting the back and the front. So now we're gonna start the face frame. Now this is on her heavy side, so I'm gonna do a lot of elevation. 
a lot of weight removal, but I want a ton of movement around her face as well. So I bring everything up. I'm going to do a point cutting technique to have a nice broken line. Soft lines fall soft. Uh, hard lines obviously fall thicker and more blunt. So I wanted to soften the edge of this haircut, especially on somebody with longer and thicker hair. So I'm going to go all the way over to the ear. Now you have to be really careful because um, the shorter you cut this, you'll notice I do that slide up a little bit on this as well. So I want to push a little extra length into the back there, but you can have a nice disconnection happen, which sometimes can be good, sometimes can be bad. So make sure um, when you work on that side section, if you want the entire side to go together and go right into the back, don't be afraid to pull that whole back to you as well. Don't stop at the ear. So again, going through doing my cutting. Now, a lot of you guys might be asking, how do you get your guideline? I get my guide based on visual. So looking at where do I want that first piece of hair to fall? I wanted it to fall right around her chin. Uh, and that's where I wanted to build this technique from. So I go through there and uh, I find my guideline and then I elevate everything and cut it at that point. So again, if you want everything to connect all the way into the back, then just keep bringing hair forward until you have nothing left. Now I'm going to do my connection on the side, again, cutting parallel to the floor. Okay, now we're going to let down the top section, uh, and this is how we're going to finalize the cut. We're going to cut some really nice short layers. I want to keep everything, again, this is going to be the theme of the video, I guess, parallel to the floor here as well. So I lift everything up, my fingers parallel to the floor, and I cut across uh, her hair. Now I'm going to cut a blunt line first. Uh, then I'm going to go in at the end of the cut and do some dry cutting where I'll break up this line. So again, think this is a blunt line. It's going to be thick. It's going to uh, fall heavier. So I want to go in and lighten that up later. But everything, this is now a traveling guide. And I'm going to travel all the way to the front of her head uh, doing this same thing, cutting parallel to the floor straight across. So some nice short layers, um, nice precise layers through the top of the haircut. So one thing you got to keep in mind when you get to the front of the head shape is that the head shape curves down. So once you get towards that forehead, it starts to curve down towards her nose, right? So the it's a, a round shape. So my fingers kind of follow that curve of the head a little bit so I don't build up too much extra weight around that face frame. All right, so the product I'm using in her hair is the Joyco Firm Hold Design Foam. The thing I love about this product is that it's got a nice firm hold but it doesn't feel heavy in the hair, but I feel like I have a ton of control. So those are the, really the key benefits for me. Also, tons of shine uh, happening with this product. You can see her hair glossing, shining, but it's also uh, the Joyco Luma Shine uh, product also makes creates a ton of shine in the hair as well. So double up the shine. Now I'm gonna go in with the Matt Beck version Mizutani dry cutting scissor, which should be available soon. Check freesaloneducation.com. I'm going through and I'm gonna do point cutting on that line that I created. So remember I said that, um, that it gets a little bit heavy when you cut a nice blunt line? Well, now I'm gonna go through and break that up. So I'm doing a texturizing technique where I cut the, the hard line first. I go in and soften that up. Then I go mid shaft to ends and I slide my hand up, uh, creating tons of just space and air and movement in her haircut as well. So breaking up those ends and then going through sliding and cutting. This is a slide cutting technique that I also like to use on dry hair. Um, this is more visual. It's more of like a chiseling out of different weight throughout the haircut. So I just pinch the hair and I half close the scissor and I glide down the hair. So now we've, we smoothed her all out. We gave her a dry cut. We've got to really finalize. Now I want to give her a style to walk out the door with. So this is a cool technique using a flat iron, heating up the hair and then curling it into a round brush and letting it sit and cool. Then once it cools, I pull it out. I pull out the round brush. I refold it up with my hands, wrap it around my fingers a bit, and then I slide a clip in there and let it cool even more. And I finish the style doing it that way. So really easy technique, something that you could do if you just wanted to pop some volume and some bangs or uh, have a little bit of volume in your face frame. You could just curl it a little bit. If you're better at curling with a flat iron, this is a pretty cool technique. I like using the round brush instead of just a regular brush because it allows me to kind of form uh, the hair and let it sit for a minute and cool. 
Then once I take it out and I put it in my fingers, it's real simple to get it to fold up uh, and slide that clip in. So you can see it's a pretty easy technique uh, as I go through. So I'm using my Ergo uh, round brush and then um, heating it up with that iron and pulling it through. So you can see it do it all off of the face. So everything's kind of back off the face. That's gonna give me tons of volume and then pull the hair away from her face, opening her face up, really showcasing that face frame that we put in there. So now I'm gonna take everything out. We're gonna unveil the final look. Um, this is really cool because you can already see the color coming through, how rich it was. So here's the before and here's the after. See the shape of the haircut, how it brings it in. You can still see some of those highlights popping through on the ends, but they're nice and neutral now. So we use that NV to do that. And you can see all the layers, the movement, all of that going through it. So I hope you guys like this video. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about this technique. I'd love to answer those. Hope you enjoyed it. Share it with your friends. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you guys on the next video.